So let's talk over what's next for the Big Ten with college football reporter Heather Dinich. Heather, Kevin Warren has said his priority always is the well-being of student athletes. What protocols and testing does the Big Ten employ, perhaps different from other conferences, to limit student athlete exposure to COVID? Well, unlike the ACC, SEC, and Big 12, the Big 10 is using daily antigen tests followed by a PCR test to confirm any positive daily results. And then a coach has to be self-isolated for 10 days. But the biggest difference is that the earliest a player in the Big 10 who tests positive can possibly return is 21 days. That's because they self-isolate for 10 days as recommended by the CDC guidelines. But after that, they go through a period of cardiac testing plus what they call a return to play progression, where they gradually increase from light exercises to being ready to actually get back in a game. Okay, and I, I think about the current climate right now, and still there are problems at the University of Michigan. There's a stay at home order for students, though the team can still play to uh, travel to Minnesota to play. And then we've got Jeff Brom testing positive for COVID. We mentioned earlier that COVID positive tests and related deaths have increased significantly since August. If the Big Ten schools were better situated before the decision to postpone the fall season, how are coaches, administrators, and others that you've spoken to addressing why it makes sense to play now? It's a fair question, but their response is, look, we have been preparing for spikes since March. And the difference now between when they postponed is that availability and accessibility of the daily testing and the cardiac tests on each campus within the Big Ten. Those are medical advances that were not available to the conference before. Now, I can tell you that they also have a color-coded system that makes it very clear as to when they do have to stop. And if there's a team positivity rate between five and 7%, all athletic activities and competitions would have to come to a halt for at least seven days until they have a chance to reassess those metrics. And Jeff Brom earlier this week, he said he's still confident in the Big Ten's plan, and he tested positive, as you mentioned, and he has symptoms, including fever, chills, and chest congestion. But everyone I talked to said they're confident with the plan, and I did talk to every single Power Five conference commissioner. And while no one is under any illusion that they're getting through this season um, without any interruptions, the general consensus is, look, if we can play, we will play. Heather, you know, other conferences, the SEC, the ACC, obviously, began play five weeks ago. How will the late start for the Big Ten impact Big Ten schools that could be in the conversation for the college football playoff? Well, Ryan, there's no question they're playing from behind. Alabama and Clemson each have already played at least four games. They're undefeated. Both of them have at least one win against a top 25 opponent. And now the Big Ten has to see if Ohio State, Penn State, Wisconsin can all live up to the billing in a span of eight games in eight weeks. And look, if they can, there's a possibility that the Big Ten can put two teams into the college football playoff. But we will learn a lot more on Halloween when Ohio Ohio State and Penn State face each other. All right, that'll be a key matchup right there. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.